What's up, Gore Squad? Thamox here from Game on Your Face, and today I'm finally bringing you guys the Lidstrom vs. Bork review that you voted for so long ago. I know my NHL reviews have been slowing down recently. I've only done like two in the last four weeks, but I made a new schedule, so I'm going to start releasing two reviews per week. I'm um, also bringing back the NHL's best, re uh, NHL's best series that I had last year, along with a new series that's easier to produce so I can upload them more often. Uh, I've been looking for a new series for a while. I finally came up with a decent idea, so uh, that will be coming out soon. But without further ado, Lidstrom versus Bork. This video is brought to you by Hot Puck Traders for all your Hot Puck needs. The Rules I will play both players for 7 games on 100 chemistry lines. They will not be assigned any boosts or captaincy cards. The overall grade will be based on 5 stats. Puck skills, skating, shooting, physical, and defensive. His current average price is 120k, putting him in the same price range as Ryan Suter. Puck skills. He gets an 8.5. Lidstrom was great with the puck. His stick handling was very smooth and responsive. I had full confidence when using him to enter the zone or get around a defender. He's also a solid passer. Obviously for a defenseman, the most important pass is that breakout pass, and Lidstrom hit the tape every time with no problem. On top of that, he has great hand-eye, which had him swatting a few pucks out of mid-air. Skating. He gets an 8. Lidstrom's speed was much better than I expected. His card only gave him an 85, but I feel like he performs closer to 87 or 88. He's fully capable of leading the rush and creating offensive opportunities. While his acceleration isn't the best, he's got amazing endurance. He can go full speed on the attack and still hustle on the back check to stop a play. Shooting. He gets a 6.5. This is definitely the weakest aspect of his game. Lidstrom's wrist shot was 50-50. Some games he'd have no problem picking the corners, and the next game he'd miss the same shot. His slapper was no better. He's not the guy that you want taking the one-time clappers from the point. He's the guy that you want setting up those one-timers. Physical. He gets a 7.5. Lidstrom's physical ability is perfectly average. If you're looking for a bone-crushing defenseman, then Lidstrom is not for you. When needed, he can throw a hit, but that's really not his game. That being said, he's not a weakling either. He can definitely hold his own when being harassed by the opposition. Defensive. He gets a 10. This is obviously Lidstrom's greatest selling point. Most people mark him as the greatest defender of the last decade, and some even argue of all time, but regardless of where he may rank, he's definitely one of the best in this game. His poke check was always on point, and he stopped countless cross crease passes. When left to the AI, he was very consistent with the positioning of my strategies, which led to interceptions and blocked shots. He was also good in the ref size and managed to stay out of the box. Total points. In 7 games, he got 2 goals and 2 assists for a total of 4 points. He was also a plus 5. His overall grade comes to 8.1 out of 10 or 81%. That's a B-. Lidstrom is a very strong 2 way defender. He can start the player with his breakout pass, he can lead the rush with his speed, he has the resilience to take some punishment, and of course, at the core of it all, he can stop your opponents in their tracks with his legendary defensive ability. But as I said earlier, he's not going to be the guy to deliver those big hits or whale clappers from the point. In the offensive zone, he's better suited to be the playmaker and not the scorer. However, if you are looking for that scoring type, then you better take a look at Lidstrom's opponent, Ray Bork. His current average price is 90 k putting him in the same price range as Team of the Week Bufflin. Puck skills. He gets a 9. Bork's card has his hands as his highest attribute at 93, and he definitely plays true to this stat when in game. His deking ability is not quite, but very close to the level of Datsuk. Without a doubt, the best hand out of any defenseman I've played this far. Better than Eric Carlson. Not only can he dangle, but he can pass just as well. Whether it be on the breakout or setting up a goal, he can be relied upon to get the job done. Skating. Gets an 8.5. Bork skating was one of those surprise abilities. I went into this review thinking he would be average, but he turned out to be much more. He's got great speed that when used right can be very dangerous on the attack, and if you do get burned, just like Lidstrom, he's able to get back in time to make up for his mistake. But what gives him the edge is his agility. He's very swift and can make those small precise movements which complement his deking and make him great for holding the blue line. Shooting. He gets an 8. 
Bork's wrist shot was much better than Lidstrom's. While Lidstrom's was on and off, Bork was more consistent, and even though he only got 3 goals, there were never any moments where he would totally miss fire. That being said, his slap shot was just as weak, so I wouldn't assign him to be your blue line bomber either. Physical. He gets a 6.5. Bork was a strange case when it came to physical ability. When he tries to hit, he really doesn't do much damage, and in some cases, he'll be the one to get the worst of it. However, he's much better being on the other side. When he has a puck, he's got pretty good balance and puck control, and those close shoves won't have him losing possession. So he'll be fine on those slight bumps, but anything more, and he'll get wrecked. Defensive. He gets a 9. I would say that Bork was just as good defensively as Lidstrom. His poke check and stick lift were up to par, and for the most part, he was exactly where I wanted him to be. I could be confident to play my style and rely on him to shut down the other team's offense. Where he runs into trouble is his discipline. He managed to notch 6 penalty minutes in his short stint on my team. Total points. In 7 games, he got 3 goals and 3 assists for a total of 6 points. He also finished with a plus 8. His overall grade is 8.2 out of 10 or 82%. That's a B-. minus. This is without a doubt the closest play review I've done so far. Both players finished with a B- and were only 1% apart. However, if I were going to suggest a defenseman, I would go with Ray Bork. These two players will feel very similar, varying slightly in different areas. For skating, puck skills, physical and defensive, it's pretty much a wash. So the deciding factor is a shot, and that's why I'm going with Ray Bork. On top of all the in-game factors, there's also the price. And right now, Bork is averaging for 30k less than Lidstrom. But again, he only wins by a slight margin. He is physically weaker and will take more penalties. So if that's a deal breaker for you, then go with Lidstrom. Either way, you can't really go wrong. Both of these guys will serve as great defenders on your team. But as always, this is just my opinion on it. So take from it what you will. Uh, next review is Mario Lemieux to finish off the Legends. But don't forget to go to the description. I'm also going to leave a comment down below. And go there and vote for the next review after Lemieux. Uh, there's a link and you just click that and go to the poll. Vote there. Um, if you like this review, leave, it, leave a like and uh, subscribe to join the Goyf Squad. I'm Famox from Game On Your Face. And I'll see you in the next one.